Welcome to Minnesota Music Mom. I'm Karen Davis. I had some viewer requests. They asked if I could do a tour of the pipe room in the church where I play organ, and that is Emmanuel Evangelical Lutheran Church of Buffalo, Minnesota, Wells, Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod. We have a ruder organ that was built in 1928 and installed in 1929. So I usually say it's a 1929 organ, but in reality, it is 1928. And also, I wanted to um, let you know that Joseph of Ruder Company emailed me and let me know that I've been saying something a little wrong, and I'm glad he corrected me. Thank you, Joseph, for doing that. I've been saying that the organ is in the balcony, but actually the organ is where all the pipes are, and the shutters, and the tremolo box, and all that. That is the organ, but the console is where I sit, and that is in the balcony. And so normally, you know, people would think or call the console the organ because that's what you can see. In our church, you can't see any of the pipes or anything like that. So I just wanted to do a little introduction. Uh, the actual pipe room video tour follows this introduction. So I just wanted to let you know that this room back here is a preparation room where the minister can prepare for sermons. Um, I'm sorry, for the services. And then the door over here is goes into the pipe room. And so that is where Paul and I went to show you all the pipes in there, the tremolo box, um, the shutters, and, and what that room looks like. So all the pipes are in the room behind this wall. Now this here, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail because we do that in the tour, but these pipes here have nothing to do with the organ. Those are just decoration. The sound comes out of these vented area here. The shutters are right up against this vented area, and the shutters are what regulates the volume tied to the expression pedal that is on the console. Now, if I turn this recording around, then you will see in the balcony, that is where the console is. That is where I sit. All right, so I just wanted to do this short little introduction so that um, I could straighten out that information about the console versus the organ and let you know what the Pipe Room Tour was all about. I have a church member and close friend of mine, Paul Nowak. He is going to help me do the tour. First, I wanted to start out with this article that we have, and I will put a link of the with this um, for this article on my YouTube uh, description but there was a news article about when we restored the church organ it's a rooter pipe organ and it was actually um, created in or built in 1928 but we installed it in 1929 so on my videos a lot of times I say the 1929 rooter pipe organ actually um, the the actual date is 1928 but this article tells that there are 421 pipes for this um, organ, and the smallest of the pipes is about the size of a pencil. Okay, so I started down here in the hallway. If you saw the tour of Emmanuel, my other tour um, video, then you have already seen this area. I'm going to walk you up to the upper area. I'll try not to go too, I'm going too fast again here. And introduce you to Paul. I'm doing a little, a little tour for those of you that didn't see it so that you can see where the pipe room is. Okay, so we're gonna go on up front here. And Paul is waiting <laughs> up in the front. <laughs> All right. So this is Paul Nowak, church member and a good friend of mine, and he is knowledgeable about the pipe room and the pipes and the organ. He has helped to refurbish it. And so we're going to go on into the pipe room. Now, as you see, the sound. Now, these pipes right here, Paul, those are just decorative. Yep. 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 They do not actually produce any sound. No. The sound comes out of the vented area here, the screened area. The pipes are behind that screened area in that little room. And the chimes are behind the tree right there. But the volume for the chimes are in the basement. But so the pipe room is actually in here. And so we're going to go ahead and go in there and show you some things in there. 
So, Paul, if you want to um, go ahead and go in there, and I'll show you everyone else. Um, that is where the organ is, up in the upper right-hand area of your screen. So, Paul has gone in here, and now here we are. As you can see, <laughs> it's a little cramped in here. <laughs> Okay, so the motor you hear running is we do have the organ on right now. I have the organ turned on. Now, if I put this up, you can start to see some of the pipes. Okay. But you can't really stand up in this area completely because there's a board in the way. Okay, but I can come over here. There's Paul. And here's the ladder. All right. Didn't know I could do that anymore. <laughs> can you see all these pipes here? All right, all those wooden pipes. These are the Bordon pipes. What are they called? Bordon. And they're controlled by your foot pedals. Oh, okay. I always say Borden. I've been saying them wrong. <laughs> I'm just going by the spelling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can see how big that one base one is. This must be about 10 inches square. Okay. They call it a 16 foot pipe. Uh huh. But there's no way you can get 16 foot pipe in here. Right. Okay. So what they do is they have that divider in the middle. The air goes eight feet up one side and eight feet back down the other side. Oh. And then the sound exits on the bottom down here. So that so you're saying that's why it's so wide. It, normally it wouldn't be that wide if it could be taller? Probably. Okay. That's why the sound exits on the bottom. Okay. Because it has to make a round trip. Oh, all right. So these are all the foot pedal pipes. All the wooden ones are the foot pedal pipes? Are these on this wall. Oh, oh, okay, gotcha. There's 32 of them. Okay. All right. And oh, then a second, you got two chests here. Two chests? And there's two ranks in each chest. Okay. So this is one chest here, and there's two ranks. A rank of pipes here, and a rank of pipes here. Okay. And there's two more ranks over there. Oh, way over here. Okay, gotcha. And you can see how little these pipes are? Yeah, yeah. And there's like, <clears throat> I saw in the article on the wall down in the hallway, there's 421 total pipes. Oh. There's 73 in each rank here. Let me get you. You got solitinal, diapason, celeste, and dulciana. Okay. You said there's how many on each, on each 73 rank? 73 in each rank. On each rank, there's 73. So 73 times 4 right here. Okay. They're really beautiful, aren't they? And you can see how the silver slide that goes up and down in there, that's how they tune the pipe. How, which, what is the slide? What do you say? Oh, oh, right at the top. Okay, I'll yep. see if I can point. And there's a spring. That slide that right there? Thing, yep. Okay. And then what about the spring? That's how the, the, the clamp stays on there, and you slide it up and down. That's how you're tuning. Oh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. So how, do you know how tall this room is? How high this room is? No, I don't. Now there was some, we did have some water damage. That was the reason why we needed to come in and fix some of these. Right. Uh, the water got down on the valves underneath the pipes. The valves underneath the pipes. And they made leather. <clears throat> the leather. The leathers. And they couldn't take the water. So the leathers are where then, where we can't see them? They're underneath what? the bottom side, you can't, well, not you can't see them. Okay. And that ribbon that's tied around there? Yeah. That's to keep the pipes in position. They're not attached, they're just freestanding. These are, seriously? Right. So to keep them standing upright, they got that ribbon tied around them. Oh, wow. This is really interesting. I had no idea. And so, what are all, now what are all these over here? The wooden ones over yeah, that there. wall, it's called the flute pipes. Oh. There's 97 of those. Okay. 
And is that the same thing as far as you said on the other side, where the air goes up and well, if down? It's, if it's called a 16-foot pipe, then yes. Okay. If it makes an 8-foot pipe, then no. Okay. Now, none of these pipes, when they refurbished, did the whole refurbishing thing, and, and uh, I know they replaced the leathers, and they also replaced the, what do you call that? Tremolo. The tremolo? Yes. And um, the blower? Did they replace the blower? No. <coughs> the shutter control was new. Okay. It was pneumatic before, now it's electric. Okay, and what's the difference between pneumatic? What's pneumatic mean? It's air controlled by air pressure. Okay. There were some bad valves that, that weren't working. Okay. And they changed, <coughs> excuse me, oh, I was going to say, all the pipes, though, the actual pipes in here are original. Yes. Right? Yes. None of the pipes were replaced. No. <coughs> excuse me. And then the connections in the organ itself were replaced from... Um, manual to or to digital, right? No, or, it's not digital. It's still oh oh. It's oh. still electrically switched. Oh okay. I was thinking some of them were digital because the connections like weren't working all the time. You know, I would push a stop yeah, down and I. The contacts. The con new yeah. contacts. Okay, that's what it was. Because before I'd push a, a stop down and then the next time I'd come, it, there was no guarantee that that would work. But but now when I push a stop down, I know that the next time I come, that, that is going to work. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So how do you know, I remember hearing somewhere that you can't actually touch or you shouldn't actually touch, like grab a pipe because that's not good to get your grease. Pipes your are very soft. They're made of like the same material as solder would be made from, like tin and lead. They are very fragile. And you can see, get a close-up of these, you can see a little slide on there too. Oops, I'm sorry. A little thing that moves up and down. Oh! That's tuning. Okay, uh, it's more point visible, to one more again. Pipes. But that little top part there that moves up and down, that's for tuning. Okay. Wow. I, it just has always amazed me. Oh yeah, see how some of them down... Okay, let's see if I can get some of the slides. Where was it here? Back in the back row, they're lower. Mm -hmm. You can see the see, slides a slot are lower. In the side of the pipe, too, somewhere. Like the top, and you can see a slot on the right side there. Oh, yeah. It's hard to. There's a, a there's slide that covers a portion. Part of the <laughs> see if I can get, there's a slot on the side there. <laughs> okay. And I'm sorry, what were you saying, Paul? That slide will cover a portion of that slot for two. Okay. Wow, this really, it makes so much more sense to me because, I mean, I knew, I didn't really know exactly, you know, how all that worked. When they said that they would tune it, I didn't really understand how they tuned it. Man, that is really um, detailed as far as, I mean, for each pipe to be tuned, for it would take t be time-consuming to try to figure out. And the tuning guy has to wear gloves, too, we don't want to get your fingerprints or... Even heat sensitive. Right, that's right. Because the humidity affects the weather and so forth. Sometimes it gets out of tune and these from the humidity. Pipes are very sensitive to humidity too. And the leathers, um, that was one reason too. The leathers they crack the, after a while. The, the, the age, anyway. the age. Okay. So you see the humidifier. I'm standing away, but there's a humidifier in there. Okay. To keep the constant humidity. All right. Good deal. I never noticed them pipes up there. How little they are. It's just amazing, just amazing how the organ works. And they think they built all this back in the 1920s. Yeah. It's an amazing workmanship. It is, it really is. Okay, so I suppose that's like a, that's a walkway right there, I would imagine, so mm -hmm. that they can get to where they're, they're going. Okay, and then the tremolo, um, let's see, let's go on down. I'm going to try to get out of here. Well, you want, I can go up and do that. Oh, okay. Just well, step in the pipe. Oh, that's all right. I'll go, I'll go over and do it. Is it, did you see him move? Yeah, keep doing it back and forth a few times. That's how we control the volume. That's how the sound gets out of the pipe room.
Yeah, that's really interesting because, you know. There's Karen. <laughs> off you would never even know that there were shutters here there's very few people ever been in this room yeah, right <laughs> true they, they don't even realize this room exists i know they think it's a closet or something yeah and you can see the the church now through the shutters that is cool okay so now um should we do the tremolo thing yeah, let's do that next okay so now they can climb down here with me Okay, I'm gonna climb out here a little ways and then I'll turn it around and so you can show the tremolo. Tremolo makes the sound kind of flutter. So the way they do it is to flutter the air pressure. And that's done by vibrating this whole box here. Huh. Now you said this was replaced, right? The box, this whole box was replaced? Yeah, the whole box is shaking because of that off-center weight there. So when I turn, when I push down the stop, the tremolo stop upstairs in the balcony on the organ, this starts happening. That starts that motor up, yeah. And that's what makes the sound wavery, like that. It flutters the air pressure. Yeah. Pretty clever, cool. isn't it? it? It really is. Whoever, you know, thought of of that. I know some people don't like the tremolo. Like, for instance, for hymns, I don't have the tremolo on because mm -hmm. it, it would sound kind of weird. But, like, if you're playing a nice prelude, um, then I turn the tremolo on. That's neat. So there's a switch down here that can run it also because I have the tremolo on right now upstairs on the organ, but you're able to turn it off here on the switch if That's you want. That's just for the video here. But yeah, just for the video. We'll leave it on. Otherwise, then. normally it's on. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So, okay, so now what's all this, the air pressure, That where is the air coming from? You said the blower's in the basement? The blower's downstairs in the basement, comes up into this box, and these pipes go to each rank of uh, each chest, where the pipes are. Okay. Wow. You know, like you said, to the workmanship to try to fit all these pipes into this small room. Look at all these valves here. They're all be wired in there. And those are valves. Oh, that's a swell. Okay, so now I see the word swell there. Mm -hmm. So that's for the swell manual or yes. for the swell stops? The swell keyboard. Isn't swell it? keyboard, yeah, yeah. And those are valves that. What, tell us a little more about... For each individual pipe, it's more Okay. Wow. And then you were had some wires here, too, that you were looking at. Let's see if I can get... Maybe I can lay down and... <laughs> oh, wow. I'm going to press a key. Uh... Can you hear that? He's making it sound. Oh, that is neat. Okay, so then those wires you were looking at, where were those? Those were on the other side of this board, right? And what? And those are just so that they're connected. Some of them may come connected, uh, disconnected, or something like that. Yep. Wow, there's a lot that goes. There's a lot that goes into that. And there are some organs that are much more complex than this one, too. Yeah, actually, you know, for the number of stops that we have, there really aren't that many stops mm -hmm. on this organ. Okay, we are now in the basement. And we there is a wall in one of our hallways here that Paul is moving back. And there are some where the blower is. The organ is turned on right now. Not much to look at here. Yeah, it's kind of it's dirty and grungy, but this shows you where the. the so this is probably about three feet tall. That's what I can tell you. Okay, so that's like the whole. So does that 
cover like come off? I mean, how would you fix that if it had to be fixed? If the whole cover comes off? You have to go inside the bathroom here. Okay. Take some screws out. Screws I don't know. Oh, okay. That's so you, you did it from it. the you access it from the side. Right. Okay. Huh. And then uh, is this you, this is where the chimes volume is run to? Is that right? This switch. This determines how hard the striker hits the chime. Okay. This is the interface board between the console and the pipe. Always. Oh man, you have to be a scientist. Look at all the wiring involved. <laughs> I just can't even can't even imagine trying to figure all that out. So that so if something goes wrong and I and I say okay Paul the the such and such a stop isn't working or <clears throat> you know the expression pedal isn't working or I mean where do you go first to try to figure that out to see if you can figure it out and before we call Grandel and Engen the first place I would look at is the console itself okay see if the switch contacts are working That's okay the first project can go to Okay, because you've done some down here. Well, I mean, you you're able. <clears throat> if we would need to adjust the the chimes volume, you know, you're able to do stuff like that. And um, just right now, it's off. set just right. So that's like for um, for you, those of you that are watching this video. For the chimes, we have it set at a certain volume. And so then, when I set the organ to play with the chimes, I have to be careful not to drown out the chimes because. Um, you know, whatever setting that I set on the organ, if I set too many stops on the organ, that's going to drown out the chimes so you won't be able to hear it because I can't adjust the volume of the chimes from the organ. The volume of the chimes is adjusted right down here with this switch. So then I know how loud the chimes are, so when I set the settings on the organ, then I'm just careful so that people can still hear the chimes and I don't drown them out with the rest of the pipes of the organ. Okay, great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Paul. I really do. Um, this is so interesting, and I would have never been able to explain all, that, all this stuff to them. <clears> with that. <laughs> thank you. Paul has left the building, and uh, and I thanked him. Oh, I thanked him so much for doing this. I would have never been able to explain all this to you. Okay, I'm going upstairs to the organ now to show you, like the tremolo stop where he was explaining to you the tremolo uh, downstairs. And so there, see, there's the pipe room down there where we were. We were just there. This is the balcony of, again, we're at Emmanuel Evangelical Lutheran Church, Wells, it's Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod of Buffalo, Minnesota. And here is the organ. Now this organ is the original organ that was built in 1928, Ruder, and um, installed in 1929. Now there are some pieces that are not original, and that is the pedal board. Uh, that was replaced. And the manuals were replaced. And the stops were replaced, so I suppose you're wondering, well, you said it was the original organ. It really isn't. Well, it is and it isn't. I mean, we have had to replace some things um, because, like Paul said, the connectors and stuff. Because before, I would put, you know, I would put a stop down and choose my, choose my settings. Um, okay, so maybe I choose my settings of how I want to play a song. And then the, the, the day that, you know, for the service, I'd come in and, and I'd choose these settings and, and they wouldn't work. Some of them wouldn't work or they wouldn't stay or they wouldn't, you know. So it was, it was frustrating because I, um, I couldn't guarantee, there was no guarantee that the organ would sound the same as I had set it to sound. So that's one thing that needed to be fixed was the connectors. So I wanted to show you, and I'm using these little buttons, pistons, they're called Pistons. I call them also, my favorite is shortcut buttons is what I call them. <laughs> but <clears throat> this clears everything here. When I push this button, everything clears. So that's an easy way to clear 
at the end of the service, after I play the last hymn, I clear everything. Well, there are some that don't clear over there. This is the pedal. But when I, um, at the end of the hymn, what I do is I push this button down here, I clear everything, and then I put down the chimes on, on the grate. And then what I do is I play a little snippet of the last hymn just on the chimes. Now the chimes go, how far down do they go? There we go, that's the last one. All right, the chimes are also in the pedal. So I can put the chimes down here. And then here is the pedal. Let's see where, how far down do they go? There we go. I'm trying to play in shoes, which I am not familiar with, as you all know. Oh, come on, that doesn't work. Oh, there we go. Okay. And see, the chimes actually it, are not supposed to go up this high. <clears throat> the chimes, I'm told, are usually on the lower octave, but I specifically requested them to change it for us. <laughs> I'm so needy. I wanted them to change the chimes up higher because there are songs, prelude songs and so forth, that I was playing that I needed the chimes up higher and um, because I would play the melody line <clears throat> in the pedal chimes. So that's what they did. Listen, as long as I'm down here with the camera, let me show you. That's the expression pedal right here. That is the expression pedal that opened those um, what did they call them? I can't even, baffles, um, you know, in the, in the, where Paul was in the room. This is what makes the volume louder. Okay, the expression pedal is to make the volume louder. And that is how those were opening and closing, is I was up here doing this with the pedal. <clears throat> now they would be closed. Now they're open. Now the crescendo is different. The crescendo pedal is going to pull on more stops. So it's going to pull, no matter what you know stops you have up here, the crescendo is going to pull on more by pushing that ahead. So it's a quick way. That's what I use for hymns. For hymns, when I, um, I, do a, I have both of these closed, I do an introduction. And then when everyone's ready to sing, I put my foot in the, pedal, in the middle and I just push them all ahead. And then that brings on all the deep stops, you know, the full, rich stops, and also the volume. So everybody knows they're supposed to sing. All right, let's go back up here to the tremolo. There is the tremolo stop right here. That is what was on when we were down there showing you <clears throat> that box moving up and down. Because... Um, If I don't have the tremolo on, it sounds like that. If I do have the tremolo on, well, it didn't really sound any different, but it, do, it does, trust me. It, there's more wavering, more wavering on it. Let's see here. See, oh, that's, that's a little different. Okay, you can hear it a little better in here. So you can hear that wavering. When I play hymns, I don't have that on, but for a lot of the other music, I do. All right. So this is about um, this is about it. This is uh, what well, we have a light underneath here. That's I also have that in another uh, video about the light because there never used to be a light under here, and even though now it does not look very dark, when you are playing and you are looking at the white keys and you're looking at the white light up here and you're looking at the white page and then you have to look down at your foot for some reason you know to get your foot on the right pedal it's all dark now the phone is making it lighter but your eyes just pretty much see black shadows so we ask someone to install a light under here and it is wonderful absolutely wonderful all right, well, that is uh, about it then for this video. I hope you enjoyed the Pipe Room 
Uh, seeing the pipe room, very interesting information. And um, I invite you to leave some comments about it or questions. If you have any questions, um, I will reach out to Paul Nowak, and I'm sure he will be able to answer them. And if he can't, I can reach out to Grandel and Engen Organ Builders, and that is um, who takes care of our organ and keeps it running smoothly. So thank you very much for, for watching, and we'll catch you next time.